to maintain its health, the mind needs its own place to rest. Not just resting in sleep, resting with alertness, awareness. And that kind of place requires several skills. One of this is the skill of just being able to be quiet. and the skill of being able to cut away your interests and things outside. Some people find this to be the scary part of the meditation. We're taught that our goodness consists of our being concerned about things outside. And here we are telling ourselves, for the time being, it doesn't matter. As I say in the forest tradition, the sky could be falling. You're going to stay right here and not let it get to you, because you need a part of the mind that things don't get to. That's your sanity. That's your safety. So learn how to find a spot inside where you're at ease with the breath, and learn how to protect it. Learn how to catch your thoughts as they go running out, or at the very least catch your tendency to follow the thoughts. The thoughts can go, but you don't have to go with them. You want a spot where you can see them go, but you're not following along. You're not getting into them. For many of us, it's like a car driving up. The driver stops and says, hey, come on in. And you get in the car and you drive off. Very rarely ask, who's driving, where are we going? The car looks shiny, and so let's go, and so you get into it. But here you want to be in a position where the thoughts come, but you don't get into them. Now, it's not simply a matter of making yourself dull to the world or dull to your thoughts. In fact, you have to be very alert to them very quick to their nuances to see the various ways in which they might try to catch you, or you allow yourself to be caught by them. And when superficial thoughts don't get you, then some of the ones that seem more important will get you. What are you doing with your life? Why are you sitting here and not helping other people? Why are you getting on with the big scheme of things? As the Buddha said, there really is no big scheme of things. Samsara is just a wandering on, and it's rather aimless. In the words of a German poet, it's just diverging lines. That may sound scary, but it's actually very liberating. If there were a plan to the universe, we'd have to figure it out. And obviously it's not written down anywhere. It's very clear in nature. And so it's, it becomes a game of guessing. But as the Buddha said, the, the wandering on just wanders. You're not obliged to fit into anyone else's pattern for life, or for your life. You get to make the choice. Now, some people take that as a license for just all kinds of misbehavior. But the Buddha said there is pattern to things, the way actions give their results. And so you don't get away with things. It's built into the nature of action. Now, when you act in a certain way on certain motivations, if it's based on greed, aversion, and delusion, there's going to be suffering. If you work on motivations that are based on renunciation, non-ill will, non-harmfulness, pulls you out of suffering. So it's not the case that because there is no purpose to all things, there's no pattern. You're not totally free to shape things. The question then comes, like, what kind of happiness do you want out of this? Where will you find satisfaction? Where will you find fulfillment? 
as the Buddha said, it's, it comes from letting go. Several Theodrians have said that the practice is basically one thing clear through. It starts with generosity and it, lend, <clears throat> it ends with total letting go. But you also have to work on developing. In other words, developing the good qualities that will allow you to let go with skill. Because if you have nothing at all in the mind, then you let go of things and you're a pauper. There's nothing left. But if you develop good qualities in the mind, then the things that you don't need anymore you can put aside. And you don't need them anymore. In other words, you're not lacking because you've given them up. So it's actually in finding this strong space inside us and developing it and maintaining it that we put ourselves in a better position to be giving to the world. So it's a pursuit of happiness that's not irresponsible. In fact, it is the most responsible way you can find happiness. It allows you to put aside a lot of questions that really don't have any clear answer. Yeah, question, who am I? I was reading a book a while back saying that that is the great question of all great religions. Well, they're not counting what the Buddha's taught. Because he said that's a question that just gets you tied up in a fetter of views. The question is it's not who am I, but what can I do? And what will be the results? That's a question that can be answered, and it can be answered in ways that really do make a difference in your life. So if it's just each of us will have to decide how we want to give to the world. That's our way of getting out of the world. Some people say that if you Try to get out of this process of samsara, you're, you're selfish. And it's bad for the world if people think they can get out. Well, actually, it's very good for the world. Because you don't get out by being selfish. You don't take things with you. You have to leave everything behind. Look at the Buddha. He created a lot of goodness and then he just left it behind. That is how he's able to enter total nibbana. So we create goodness. To leave it behind as our gift. And the leaving behind, when it's done from a position of strength, that becomes a gift to us as ourselves as well. Everybody benefits. So when the Buddha says it's all aimless, the world is aimless, it's actually liberating. It's not a thought to be depressing, it's meant to tell you that you've got the choice of how you're going to find happiness with the realization that the principle of karma, the quality of your intentions, the quality of your decisions will determine whether you actually find happiness or not, or what kind of happiness it'll be, whether it'll be a happiness that just gets thrown away or a happiness that's really something you can hold, or you can hold on to as something that's there for you. And that opens immense possibilities. If you were defined, say, by your body, or by your position in society, or by something else that someone else had imposed on you, there would be huge limitations on what you could do. But the Buddha never defines people by what they are. He says, this is what a human being can do. And one of the things a human being can do is find true happiness. Human beings in the process will be, can be generous, they can be virtuous. They can find true well-being inside their minds. and You don't have to wait until you die. It's right here. The possibility is right here. So be careful not to limit your notion of what's possible in your human life. There's a passage where the Buddha says you want to get the most benefit out of a Dharma talk. One, you don't have contempt for the talk. Two, you don't have contempt for the speaker. And then he says very interestingly, you don't have contempt for yourself. In other words, you don't belittle your possibilities, you belittle your capabilities. So 
So think of what this opens for you. There's no one out there making a plan for you, as the chat we had just now said. There's no one in charge. Or as John Fuing used to say, when you were born, nobody hired you to be born. So there's no one who can tell you what you have to do with your life. But the principle of karma creates a pattern of responsibility that you can't ignore. So taking that into consideration, what do you want out of life? The choice is yours. And here are the tools, the tools of the meditation, developing tranquility, developing insight. These will help you choose well.